going to warn you right now that I've cheated. I've decided to present two of my passions, not just one. I am an epidemiologist here at the university, which means I study disease spread throughout communities and factors associated with those disease, diseases. The first issue that I'd like to speak about is uh, the, the need for greater inclusion of underrepresented minorities in the health professions. And the second is on unequal distribution of disease. The Institute of Medicine in 2004 wrote a um, expert panel decision that stated healthcare workers are not as diverse as we would like them to be. And the reasons that we would like them to be more diverse is because we know that diversity increases, um, uh, decreases barriers to receiving care and increases health equity. And they also noted that it wasn't just at the, the school level. This is pervasive um, among postgraduate levels too, and these uh, career paths are the ones that we think may influence for their generations. So as an educator here at the University of Minnesota, I'd like to think of, I often like to think about how my role can better support underrepresented groups in the healthcare setting, especially in public health. And one issue that we've thought a lot about is the unequal distribution of certain infectious diseases in our community here. Um, not too long ago, uh, about two years ago, a local community member came to me and wanted to speak about one of the biggest concerns in his community, which was liver cancer. It identified to me that there was a, health, a huge health disparity with regards to this condition. Just so that we're on the same page with what a health disparity is, the Health People 2020 uh, definition of health disparity is it's a particular type of health difference that is closely linked to social, economic, and or environmental disadvantage. So it's not talking about biological differences. And an example of a biological difference would be breast cancer rates. Women have more breast cancer than men, but that's biological. So one thing that we thought that would help improve not only addressing uh, certain health disparities in this community, but also at the same time increasing diversity in the healthcare um, workforce is community-based participatory research. Using a CPPR model with um, a, local, uh, a local agency here in the, in the Twin Cities area who came to us and said, this is not our slide, this is from the healthcare community, excuse me, from the local community who brought this to our attention. And they used this not as a way to stereotype individuals of chronic hepatitis B, which is what they wanted us to partner with them to address, but rather instead because they wanted to highlight the fact that no one was addressing chronic hepatitis B in the Asian, African, and South um, American immigrant populations. That had we developed better partnerships, this fact wouldn't, have, um, this fact wouldn't be true. And this, is a statistic from uh, Stanford University that says one in 10 Asian Pacific Islanders worldwide is living with chronic hepatitis B. And in the United States, the Center for D Disease Control had estimated that one in 12 a Asian Americans or Pacific Islanders is living with chronic hepatitis B. The problem, though, is not just the problems of the condition in our communities, but also because there are differences within the Asian community. Up until now, we've identified that Asian Americans have higher prevalence. However, certain communities, such as the Lao American community here in the United States, um, has very low knowledge uh, of hepatitis B and how to prevent it. it hepatitis B is preventable through a prophylactic vaccination that takes three shots over five months. Now, if you think back to the definition of health disparity, you can think about how social influences may affect something like vaccination rates, particularly when they're three shots. But as an epidemiologist, I felt the need to present a, a figure or two. And really what this slide shows is, yes, it is logistically difficult to implement three shots into one community. However, these shots work. So when we um, finalized the partnership with the Lao Community Center here in Minnesota, we thought that what we needed really was an everyday hepatitis B hero. And that wasn't the face of me, that wasn't the face of someone from the university, but rather it was the face of the community. Like I, like I said, the, there are certain ethnic groups within Asian Americans who um, have shorter times to death, and also higher rates of complications due to chronic hepatitis B, including liver cirrhosis and liver cancer. And one of those groups is the Lao Americans. 
So the Lao Systems uh, Center, particularly Sunny Chen Chu, <laughs> sorry, I'm speaking too fast. Uh, Mr. Sunny Chen Pen Wang came to us and said, we would very much like to address this, and we are the perfect partners to reduce this disparity within our community. So what we set out to do was develop a community-based participatory research project in which the elders from that community helped us design, so stood behind us, and developed a, a hepatitis B intervention that would be applicable to the, the community. And when I think about mentorship, I learned so much in the CPPR partnership because mentorship here, <coughs> in my old thinking, was only me going in one direction, perhaps influencing one or two students out of 100 students each year to address a concern like this. So this huge disparity that uh, Asian Americans comprise less than 5% of the total population, but they, we account for more than half of the uh, prevalence of hepatitis B. So in combining my passion to educate and CPPR models here, what we've done is partnered undergraduate students particularly um, and partnered them with the CPR project. However, in doing so, what we identified was also students did not want to be stereotyped for um, the community from which they came. So for example, if they were Asian, they really wanted to address a greater issue, not just, and bring to the table what they've been learning in school, not just the fact that they were Asian. So what we like to recommend to them as we go through is that everyone's bringing something to the table to fix the problem of hepatitis B in our community. 